Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a differential equation, but a good one. You know why? Because P of X is a polynomial. How would you know that? Well, it says polynomial riddle, so that kind of makes sense, right? And the title will probably reflect that too. So we have an equation, which is a differential equation because it contains the derivative or derivatives of a function, but in this case, a particular kind of function, which you should definitely know and be familiar with, and I've done a ton of videos on it, polynomial functions, or you can just call it a polynomial. They're very special functions where powers of x are just all over the place, but special powers, what do I mean by that? You have to have non-negative integer powers, which is called the set of whole numbers in the US. I don't know if any other country recognizes the, the set of whole numbers, whatever that means. It starts with zero. It's kind of like nat um, natural numbers plus zero. But most countries will not include zero. I guess Turkey and France maybe. And correct me if I'm wrong. Anyways, we have this equation. It's a riddle. So we're going to solve it. How do we solve this? Well, we have a polynomial and it's derivative. So that gives us some information, doesn't it? Well, here's what you need to think about. Anytime you're solving an equation with polynomials, it doesn't have to be a differential equation. It could be a type of functional equation or any other type. You should always think of something. What do polynomials have? They have powers, right? They're very powerful. But what makes them really powerful is the highest power, for example. If I have something like this, let's just make up some polynomials that I don't want to use p of x because I don't know what it is, right, yet. So let's say q of x is another polynomial and q of x is x cubed plus 1. What's the degree of q of x, right? The degree is the highest power of x, which is 3, because there's no power of x that is higher than x to the power 3. Does that make sense? And 1 is considered x to the power 0, so that wouldn't even count. What if you have something like 1 over x plus 3? Wait a minute. This is not even a polynomial because 1 over x is x to the power of negative 1, and negative 1 is not a whole number or non-negative integer. Make sense? Okay, first you have to eliminate all non-polynomials. Of course, p needs to be a polynomial. I mean p of x, don't get me wrong. So, why is the degree important? Because if you don't know the degree, then you are in trouble. That's a good question, right? Why are you in trouble? I don't know. We'll find out. Okay, suppose we don't get into the degree business. Okay, let's just do this from a purely differential equation perspective. How would you approach this problem if p of x wasn't a polynomial? I think that's a million dollar question to ask and you don't have to answer it. Don't worry about it because I'll answer it. Now, if p of x is not a polynomial, any type of function, right? Could you solve this equation? Yeah, probably. What would you do? You would first solve the homogeneous case. Why? Because this is non-homogeneous. Why? Because we have a function under it. What do I mean by that? What do you mean by homogeneous, non-homogeneous? What I mean is that suppose we set this equal to zero. I mean, this would be easier to solve, right? Don't you think? This is harder to solve. So let's go ahead and solve this first because solution of this will help us finding solutions of this. So how does that work? Well, if you assume that p of x is something like e to the power kx, and let me tell you why we're going to assume that, because anytime you have this type of function with its derivatives, this is a linear differential equation, by the way, then you can assume that it's going to be in that form. Because if you think about it, I mean, simply put, we're looking for a function whose derivative equals itself, right? So shouldn't that be in a form like this, because think about e to the x, right? What's the derivative of e to the x? Come on, you know this. You must know this. Remember the, the expression, we're missing with and we're writing with something like that. Anyways, the derivative of e to the x is itself. That's a very special function because Euler is amazing. I mentioned that in my other video that I made on my other channel, which is a plus bi. By the way, did you know about it? I focus on complex numbers. I have another channel. I have three channels. The third one focuses on shorts. Go ahead and check them out. All right, so anyways, I digress. e to the x, derivative of e to the x is itself. So yes, e to the x will be a solution, but it could also be e to the power of something x, 3x, 2x. Why? Because 
if you differentiate e to the 3x, you get 3 times e to the 3x. Wait a minute, that's not true. Well, k can be 1. I didn't say k couldn't be 1, right? And it is 1, because if you differentiate e to, e to the kx, you get k e to the kx. And if you set it equal to e to the kx, don't cancel out e to the kx. I mean, you can, because it's not 0. Never mind. Forget I said that. k equals 1. So, p is e to the x. But you know what that means? It could also be a constant times e to the x. So if e to the x works, then c times e to the x will also work. Awesome. But again, don't think p has to be a polynomial in this case. It's a function. So c times e to the x is a valid solution. But that is a solution for the homogeneous case. We do need a non-homogeneous solution. How do we do that? Look on the right-hand side. Look to the right, look to the left, look to the right. You know how you cross a street? It's kind of like that. So now when you look to the right, you're going to realize that we have a quadratic. So we, we need a particular solution. So PP, and don't get it wrong again, it's just like means the particular solution, needs to be in this form, probably. I could be wrong, but it, I'll test it. So then a P general has to be the sum of these two things. Makes sense. Because you know what? When you differentiate this piece, it's going to be the same thing. So we're going to be good. But when you differentiate this piece, e piece, eventually you should get something like this, hopefully. I don't know yet, but we'll find out. Okay, let's check it out. We need this, right? We need this to be satisfied. Let's go ahead and test it out. Differentiate P, and you'll get c to the x plus 2ax plus b. Now subtract p minus px, p prime I mean, p minus p prime. That'll be uh, c to the x. You see, something will cancel out, right? That's what I mean by the homogeneous solution because the homogeneous solutions will disappear, which is good. These two will disappear and we'll end up with a quadratic. Well, sort of, right? Let's see, this is ax squared plus b minus 2a quantity x and then plus c minus b and we know that this stiff difference is equal to x squared minus 2 what does that mean that means this needs to be 1 and this needs to be 0 because there is no x here you see these are two polynomials that are equivalent like true for all values of x right over the set of real numbers and c minus b needs to be negative 2 which also means b minus c equals 2 so b minus c is 2, b minus 2a is 0, and a is 1. Can you solve this system? Of course, easy. Look, b equals 2a, but a is 1, so b is 2. If b is 2, c is 0. Great. So we got a, b, c. It's as easy as the alphabet, right? Now, how did we write p of x? Well, we just assumed a form like this. So we're going to write it now as c to the x, by the way, c is an arbitrary constant. It could even be 0, plus ax squared, plus bx, plus c, which is 0. So p of x will be a solution, and you can check that. Differentiate it, subtract it from p of x. You should get x squared minus 2. If you don't, come back and let us know. I'm, 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 guaranteed, I'm guaranteed that you'll find it. So, but if p is a, not a polynomial, this is true. What if p is a polynomial, right? then can I just totally get rid of this? That's why the degree is important. Did I say all these things just for degree? Yes, because the degree of a polynomial is super important. But here's what you can do. You can just assume that, by the way, let me rewrite the original equation. You probably forgot it, right? Like this? Okay. So here's the million dollar question. What is the degree of P of X? That's the first question you should ask. So you don't have to go into this loop. But suppose it wasn't a polynomial, then you could still solve it. You see, that's the good thing. So, what's the degree of p of x? Can it be linear? No, because if p is linear, p prime is going to be a constant, like ax plus p, a. It won't work. Can p be cubic? If p is cubic, its derivative is going to be quadratic. Their difference cannot be quadratic unless the coefficient of x cubed is 0, which is going to make it non-cubic, which will make it quadratic. To keep a long story short, p needs to be a quadratic equation, and it needs to be in this form. But we already found the solution. So p is equal to x squared plus 2x, which is the particular solution to our differential equation.
And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. By the way, go ahead and consider joining, becoming a member, and get some perks. And don't forget to check out A plus BI. And bye-bye.